so yesterday we did edge weapons in our normal street colos, etc. Um, today we're going to do this, the, the foundation of all of that movement, okay? With our EI Jutsu, tying into our Jujutsu, and showing how, from a classical standpoint, when you do the sword, you're learning everything. All the movement, all the stripes, all the chokes, all the breaks, all the throws, all the strangles, everything is done from sword movement, from a classical perspective. The strikes are quite different than when I boxed, kickboxed, did karate's of various kinds, or kung fu's of various kinds. Um, so what we want to do is understand why we're doing this, and what's the advantage of this movement. Okay. Because the edge of the blade defines everything, we start taking out things like tough and ability to take punishment, and what kind of chin does he have when you're tapping him, etc. Because the sword doesn't care. So it changes everything. It also equalizes out many things, okay? size, etc., age, because the sword's going to give you the offensive power that you need. A taller guy might have reach, but he's probably not as fast. A smaller guy's faster, maybe doesn't have as much reach. So, you know, at one level, those things become a fairly you know, uh, significant part of the deal. But as you get better, your ability to take out all of those movements that actually don't help the process and many of them work against the process means that you're doing less and less, right, becoming more efficient, less time, less space, less energy. And so what gets perceived as speed is actually efficiency. You're just not moving very far. Your movement can't be seen. It's deceptive in its, you know, what the opponent perceives. The movement itself can't be seen in the moment. And the action taken is decisive. This is not a back and forth thing. Those of you in the military or you know, emergency medical personnel, etc., you've seen what happens when there's back and forth. We really don't want to be part of the back part of that. Okay? Remember the Lord said it's better to give than to receive? Okay, we'll practice giving. So, what I want to go over a little bit today, and the EI Jutsu is right from the beginning draw what we're doing. You know, where does that place us? Why do we draw that way? Okay, because you've got all kinds of other practices out there and you have many styles from the past. And some of them have a lot of lineage to them. Okay. So I will, uh, They're not all equally good. I don't care how old they are. They're not all equally good. And they're not all equally good for all kinds of reasons. Okay, in 1645, one of the most well-known people by modern, you know, practitioners uh, from ancient Japan as a swordsman was Mimoto Musashi. In 1645, he said, this is going to be the end of Kenjutsu. And that was because the third Tokugawa Shogun, Iemitsu, had outlawed dueling. He says, there's becoming a, a, you know, a martial arts school, a kenjutsu school, on every street corner now. Because nobody can come in and challenge them. So they're no longer being tested to know if what they're doing is the best thing or not. So when you start taking away that practical application and that literally trial by fire, Things are not going to be the same. Not possible, right? Not possible. Through that Pax Tokugawa, you had a long time where there was no war. So most of the arts transitioned to a lot of civilian style, not battlefield style techniques. Maybe it makes sense, right? So <clears throat> let's take a look at what we're going to do and why we're doing it. First of all, samurai wear two swords, so when we train, we wear two swords. Okay? If you're only going to have one sword, it's your short sword, because that's what samurai did. Okay? We don't go in seiza with the long sword in the obi, because samurai didn't do that. And remember, when you're looking at everything, including the courtesies of bowing in, how and why, 
entering the mat with the left foot, not the aggressive attacking right foot. Okay? How we hand the swords back and forth. This is all weapons handling. This is all practical stuff that you guys have been in the military or something. I mean, you got to have that stuff. Right? you got armed warriors walking around. How are they going to be able to exist with each other if they don't have some protocols that are recognizable and don't threaten the opponent? If you broke those protocols, you can read in some of the uh, writings uh, from ancient Japan. You were cut down. Your fault. They were fed up personal responsibility in some days. We transitioned to it's always somebody else's fault, not mine. By the way, that is a complete victim mentality. It works against nature. It doesn't work properly. You take responsibility because the only freedom you're going to have is by taking responsibility. In our philosophy, we take responsibility for everything. You know, any of the genetic problems you're born with, your gender, your size, or everything. We take responsibility for it all. It's the only way to freedom. Once you start blaming or feeling sorry for yourself, as we call it, say, don't feel sorry for yourself. Once you start doing that, right, you're just tearing yourself down. You know, you're making yourself a victim. You're disempowering yourself instead of empowering yourself. This is about empowerment. Right? And to state again, you know, bushi, the Japanese word for warrior when you write the characters, right? Bushi, to stop the spear, one who stops the spear, one who protects and defends. So the warrior has a different prime directive than most of what we call martial arts, right? Which is personal development, um, training for fighting or competition. Esoteric practice you know, to help develop yourself, all good things and, and you know, necessary things. But for the warrior, it's about everybody else, it's not about you. Okay? That's the deal. So, our warriors, most of which you never hear about, especially now you've heard about them even less, even though they're still out there fighting and dying, um, that's their deal. Right? You fight for the people behind you and your brothers and sisters in arms on your right and left. That's the deal. So it was no different in that time period. Okay, that is the warrior ethos. And samurai means one who serves. Okay, means one who serves. So let's take a look at some things about Iaijutsu that we want to understand here. Okay? So <clears throat> in our first basic Iaijutsu kata, when we move our body into Kamai, which is a static thing to start with as you're training. Eventually, all this stuff has to be done just in the flow of movement, walking, etc. Okay. You release the knee, ankle, hip on the right side to shift the weight. Okay. As you open, and this is not a step back, it is an open, the sword sits in space. Okay. It doesn't jerk around, it sits in space. And we start that with particular kamai for a reason. Now, moving it, all that may be just one long step, and I'll show that. The right hand, okay, just moves from the elbow with no bicep or anterior delt flexion. So most of you have felt that. If you need to later, I'll show you how you can feel the muscle flex, then I'll take it away. This stays relaxed to the side. So you should be able to put something underneath here as you're doing it without it dropping until you shift to draw the sword for that particular cut. All this has to stay relaxed and sensitive. There's no tension going on here. It's very relaxed and sensitive. If you look at this in the process as well, as my body shapes, and these shapes are because of the combat with the sharp edge weapon. Modern kendo and stuff is a game tag. You can sit out here like this, and your body can be squared up. But when you look at, like I've shown you some of the pictures of the two samurai boys training, you're looking, they're doing exactly what we do. They've got two swords, they're both Saya, they've got tsuba on them, you know, they're both toe. Okay? You watch the, the alignment, right? It's absolutely down the line, and the body shaped to the blade. You have this little, quote unquote, safe space behind the kisaki through the angle of the tsuba. And you need to fit yourself in there as much as possible. 
So some of the movements and the cuts, when you see them, you see that you're shaping your body behind that in the moment because this guy is also using the sword. And if you watch the exchanges like last night, if you watch the exchanges of force that take place there, well, in that arena, in those arenas between the boxing and the MMA last night, you can do that. It's not the best, but you can do that. But you're not going to be able to survive this. If the sword touches it, it's cleaved. Most of you have cut, if not, you've seen me cut stuff that's way tougher than people, right? You have to respect that. If you don't, then you have to take the consequences. That's just how it is. So here, as I shape, you bring the sword, or rather, that's a misnomer. The sword, because of the shape in your body, comes to your hand more than you bring your hand to the sword. This can be true with all kinds of draws that we do. Those of you who've done more have seen that. Don't start the hand movement first. Let the body move everything. If you start the hand movement first, your opponent's eye can immediately pick that movement up. If you move your body first, and the hand moves in, especially once we start moving with a little more speed and other movements start to come into place, like walking, turning, etc., you can make it so that the hand is not visible to your opponent at that time. The eye has limitations, okay? And the brain has limitations on what it can, depending upon that person's level of training, whether they can just see or whether they can perceive, and what level can they perceive, okay? So here, So, when you draw then, you remove the side from the blade. If the hand moves at all, it moves at the end of that. It doesn't start. So don't fire the right hand first. Don't fire the right hand first. And when you take a look at no toe, okay, when we come up and we relax this down, when the sword gets to where my body is, I open and allow the sword to have the space. Because we always let the sword have the space. And in our drawing, right, in our nukisuki and our noto, we're always letting the sword have space. At every point, we don't make the sword go around us. We let the sword have the space it wants. It's teaching you, even when you're doing relatively simple things like a practice draw, let the sword have its space. Don't contest for space with vectors of force, strategic prime directive. A really good idea not to do that with the sword. And the reason we use live blades is because it lets you know when you make that mistake. Sometimes it's minor and we can fix it in here. Sometimes you have to go to the hospital and get it fixed there. But it reminds you. Consequence. Remember, we talked yesterday about how do we learn. It's a book written by creator, creation, teaches us by consequence. That's how we learn. So opinions and arguments and philosophizing and all of that kind of stuff, right? Logical fallacies don't come into play. That's for people who are not dealing with this. So our advantage is because we live in that consequence world, it brings us closer to what actually we are really easy in modern society to get very removed from that. The vast majority of people don't plant the plants that they eat. They don't hunt the food that they eat. They have nothing to do with getting the water that comes out of their tap. They, very, they have nothing to do with the fact that they might be safe. And the vast majority of them can't fix themselves if they're hurt. Right? So they're getting ever further removed from that real connection to what's real And now you can have opinions, which is my philosophy on opinions. They're like bowel movements. They're really important to you, and no one else is interested in yours. Okay? And people go, oh, I have a right to an opinion. Yeah, thanks. Okay? I have to look my own that way, too. doesn't matter how well thought out they are. Let's keep them in perspective, even when we're spouting them off. 
that's all they are, hot air. Carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Oh no. <laughs> Not that. Okay. So, does that make sense? So when you're here, And now your body's also lined up right down that center line. Remember that center line can only be as wide as the sword, right? It can't be this wide, which is why we can't swing our hips when we move. And you have to learn to bring things through things, right? And not around things. Time, space, energy, easy to see, off the center line, give up space, nature abhors a vacuum. Okay, which is why when we look at some of the philosophies for dealing with some of the problems that people are having, maybe yard shooting, new town school, or, you know, we could go on and on with those things. Well, their solutions are not connected to reality. If you create a void, a gun-free zone, you've made a victim-rich zone. Can you great example again? People in uniform without guns, they're not guards. They're hall monitors. I remember I was a hall monitor a long, 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 long time ago. Okay? But we know that's foolish. It can't work. Because nature says so. It has nothing to do with your philosophy or your you know, political opinion or you know, some type of you know, political schema, whatever it happens to be. It has nothing to do with that. The universe doesn't work like that. You wouldn't get an airplane built with that type of you know, logic because it won't fly won't fly. So the advantage of training like this and the advantage of getting bit every now and then is that it constantly reinforces and teaches. And you can't fool yourself. We fool ourselves better than we fool anybody else. Right? The guy in the mirror, he's the guy you have to be careful of. Anything, time he says something, a double, triple check. By the way, at like 28 minutes, that'll turn off. You have to turn it back on. It's just how those things work. Okay. So, if you see, you're constantly opening, 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 opening. Okay, you're opening, which puts you right behind. So, if you're drawing, that first cut, okay, you've also moved yourself. Dry side, wet side of the blade. We try to keep things in binary. So I don't get confused. Okay? Old teachers throughout history have done the same thing. So here, if I'm making contact, okay, all of the side, if I'm like this, right, but as you come through, you're out of the way. You're out of the way. So when we were doing the edge weapon stuff yesterday, look how much we did. You're out of the way. And it's the movement out of the way that might be the entry. Might be the cut, might be everything, but even movement, you need to do that. Okay, this is about these guys coming in and not moving their head as they're punching, getting hit back and taking it. It's not going to work like that. Okay, and remember, the sword never forgets to cut. Now I've got a split thumb. You know, which reminds me every time I go to button that when I, Jay Sensei told me and taught me, and I practiced all those years to keep my thumb on the inside not over the blade when you break the blade Gucci seal, that you can get forget one moment out of thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of times. I'm involved in some of our rolling, you know, EI Dory, turning, spinning, dropping as I'm rolling, and I was aggravated with myself. Never good to get aggravated with yourself when you have tools like this. And as I came around underneath, I could feel the burn out of my thumb slip a little. I forgot. The sword never forgets. It'll always cut you. Okay? And I always get reminded. Every time I try to button or do something, it's starting to slowly get feel starting to slowly get feeling back here, but it always reminds me. <laughs> you don't get away with anything here. Right? But that's a good thing. Right? You don't get a trophy in nature for failing. You become part of the food chain, and then as fertilizer, part of the landscape, right? Nature knows but one kind of justice, 
the inevitable conformity of results to causes. That's justice in nature. When you use the word fair, that's a fantasy word. There is no such thing as fair. Okay? There's no such thing as fair. Nature doesn't recognize fair. When you're driving on a little dirt track, you know, out in Mar or Serengeti in Africa, and you come on a baby wildebeest that's dying because of disease or something, you move it off the road, nothing you can do about it. That's how things work there. That's how nature calls itself. It's just what it is. Okay. So, that whole first series, same way. Okay. Some of the second series, if I'm turning here, remember, we don't move the sword out of the way here. We don't step away with this like some of you do. It's time, space, energy. It allows my opponent to do stuff. If my opponent is here, when you turn your body, it's going to put you in the same position. Notice how the sword is brought to the hand again. And as your sword's brought to your hand this way, and you open back, it takes the side off the blade. Now the blade's right where it should have been, where it was before, between me and my opponent. And whether, you know, whatever I do from there, it's the fastest, easiest access of the blade. You're not doing very much. Okay? You're here, and you're here. Okay? Same for behind with that at the end of that series. Okay. If I'm walking and all of a sudden I'm concerned about something from behind, I should never even see the blade, maybe the tip, but most of those lighting conditions are not going to be very good. By the time I come around, my sword's out and pointed in the right direction. Basically, we left it where it was, right, and took the red pill. Right? We freed our blade. Right? We don't pull the sword out, we free the blade. Pop, done. Okay. So, not firing this first and not firing it separately. And that concept of no arms is called juntai ho. Okay. It's like the body floats. We don't walk and step. There's no bounce off the ground to move forward. There's no bounce on the ground to stop. So when I have you feel my shoulders and we're doing these movements, they're like floating. Ukimi. Right? Uki, floating, new body. Musoku no ho, no legs. Okay? No legs. So, 